I'm AJ, and I'm gonna show you how you can analyze your LinkedIn ads performance by day. While running LinkedIn ads, you might wonder, is there a day of the week that performs better? Or should I be shutting off for the weekend? I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this analysis within Excel using only Excel and the data that you get right from LinkedIn's campaign manager tool. For background, my name's AJ Wilcox. I'm the founder of B2Linked.com. We are the LinkedIn ads agency. We've managed over $150 million in spend. We're official LinkedIn partners, and I'm the host of the LinkedIn ad show podcast. Make sure to subscribe to that podcast if you want all the latest tips, tricks, and strategies to making LinkedIn ads your highest performing channel. Make sure to stick around to the end and I'll show you how we supercharge this report that we're gonna to build together today. Without further ado, let's dive in. So what I've done here on the screen is I've generated a report from the last six months of working with this particular account. All I did to the report was just deleted the first few lines of metadata that LinkedIn includes natively and just made it nice and clean. So I'm looking at data just as it came from LinkedIn. The first thing I wanna do is create a column and I'm actually gonna create two columns just to show you a couple options. I'm going to right click here and insert a couple of new columns. I'm gonna call this one day of the week. I'm gonna call the next one day number. And then you can use whichever one you'd like. Our first column already has the date. So I'm going to use Excel's understanding that this is a date and we're going to convert it to which day of the week that traffic occurred on. If you double click here in the cell and use the formula equals text, then I get to choose the value. So I'll select this cell, A2, comma. Then I get to tell it what format of text to use. I've already done my research and I know I wanna put a double quote here and type DDDD and then end quote and then finish the formula. What that does is it looks up this date, it figures out the, which day it is and then it spells it out in text. So I can now drag this formula all the way down either by dragging like this or double clicking here. And now every day that there was ad performance in the account, I have the day of the week that was associated with it. Now, if you just want the day number, this one's actually pretty easy. So you can just type equals weekday, start that formula, and then just point to the date. Now you can see Excel turned this into a long date. I don't want that. So I'm just gonna switch this to general. And same thing, I'm going to drag this down. And now whichever one I want, if I know that Saturday always equals seven, I can just use these day numbers, that's fine. But if I wanna work with the actual days of the week, I can do that here as well. To do this analysis, that's all we needed was just this extra column that's telling us what day of the week. So now we get to actually compile this data and we do that by doing control A to select all of the data here in the entire table. And I'm going to go to insert pivot table from table range and then just hit okay. Now, the first thing I want to drag into this pivot table is my day of the week. So I'll throw that in here. And now I just have every day of the week. I'm also curious to understand how weekdays and weekends react. So before I do anything here, I'm going to click on Sunday, control click on Saturday, and I'm gonna right click and click group. So now group one is my weekends. And I can hit F2 here. And this is all on PC. Sorry for you Mac users if there's different keyboard shortcuts. But I can rename this and say weekends. Now I can take the rest of the days, highlight them, right click and hit group. And I'm gonna take my group two, again, hit F2 to rename. And I'm gonna call these weekdays. Okay, so now I have the breakout here exactly the way I want it. I'm gonna start dragging the different metrics in that I wanna analyze. So first off, I can scroll down here or I can search for them. I'll just show you both ways. I'm gonna go down here to impressions and clicks and I want total spent. This client is also using lead gen forms. So I'd love to bring in leads. So if I just type in lead here, I get a couple that are leads and lead forms open. So leads tell me who actually completed, the lead forms open show me who got close. And then I have all of the base metrics that I care about here. This is great. Now I'm going to go and create a whole bunch of calculated columns. These are new metrics that I want to use what we have here on screen to create for us. If you followed any of the other reports here on our YouTube channel, this won't be a surprise to you, but feel free to check out any others and get really comfortable here with calculated columns. 
So once I've clicked inside of the pivot table, I can click up here under pivot table, analyze fields, items, and sets, and then calculated field. I want to create one for click through rate. So I'm going to do CTRs and I'll show you why in a minute I do an S at the end. And then I can go and create this formula for click through rates. I know that's, I can just type this clicks divided by impressions and hit add. Now we can go on to my next one. I also want to figure out my cost per click because that could vary by day. So I'm going to do CPCs. And in this one, I need to insert total cost. Total cost is two words. So I can't type it the same way without using apostrophes. So I come here to total spent, double click, and you can see it inserts it with the single quotes. I can do total spent divided by the number of clicks and add. I also want to do CPL, cost per leads. And this one's the same, it's total spent divided by, instead of clicks, I can type leads and add. Next, I can do conversion rates, CVRs. This will be leads divided by clicks. I can also create one called open rates or o ORs. And for this one, I wanna replace leads and get our lead forms open. So this is going to be how many people opened the form after they clicked. I'll hit okay. And now you can see there's a whole bunch of new metrics here. They're a little bit messy. We're gonna clean those up. Before I forget, I do want to go down and get our total spent. And I'm gonna drag it down again for a reason that I'll explain here in a moment. I'm gonna put it here right after the other total spent. And I'll come back and rename it here in a moment. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, with that being done, I can remove our pivot table fields since they're taking up room. And we're gonna go through and format all of these properly. So first off, we come here to click through rates. I'm going to double click on just the header here. And I'm gonna change this to just say CTR. The reason why I put S's on all the other names is because these have to be unique if I'm going to rename them. And I don't want that sum of up there. So I just change this to CTR. And I'm gonna come here to number format and change this to a percentage. And I'm okay with two decimal places. And now hit okay. So now my click-through rate is showing me click-through rates of my whole account on average by day. Pretty cool. Next, I'll come and do the same thing to my costs per click. I'm gonna rename this just CPC. Makes it a little easier to, write, to read. I'll click on number format, go to accounting, or actually currency, and I'm gonna select, uh, this, this is all in US dollars. So I'll have that breakdown. So now we can see, ooh, there are some days that are less expensive per click than others. That's already interesting. I'll come to CPL and I'm gonna change this to just CPL and change my format to currency because it's a cost. Okay, now we're looking good. Conversion rates, this is a percentage. So I'm gonna change this to just CVR, change number format to percentage. And that's okay with the double decimal. It might be cleaner without a decimal or maybe with just one, but. Uh, and then I'm gonna do for open rates, I'm gonna do the same thing. I will call this just OR. I will remember what that is and choose a percentage with two decimals. That's great. All right, I told you I was gonna do something here with this total spent two. It's a copy of this column. I wanna find out what my average spend is by day. So the way I do that is double click. I'm gonna change this to just say daily spend or maybe daily average spend. And down here in the summarize by, I'm gonna hit average. And I do want to change the format here to currency. And it renamed it for me. So now I have to go do it again. This will be average daily spend. Cool. So now I really don't need these other ones that I haven't formatted or named. So I could pull their field list back up and just remove them to keep my pivot table clean. So I'll do that. I'll come here to and just remove impressions, remove clicks, total spend. I'm actually okay leaving because that's kind of interesting, but I can come to leads and remove. Okay, now we're left with just a bunch of data that are all summary, they're calculations of metrics that we'd care about. To make these easier to see, I like to use color coding. So I'm going to highlight everything in this last column, except the grand total at the end. And I wanna come to home and then conditional formatting and then color scales. So with color scales, if you want the highest value to look good, that's the first one. If you want the highest value to look bad, that's the second one. So this is, these are the two I use the most often. For open rates, the largest open rate is a good sign. 
I'm going to come and do the same thing with conversion rates. Conditional formatting, color scales, highest conversion rate is a good thing. Cost per lead. On this one, I want to do the same thing, but the higher the cost per lead, the worse it is. So I'm going to choose the second. For costs per click, that's kind of the same thing. The higher it is to get my same traffic I want, the worse it is. So I'll use the second option. But now we're back to click-through rates where the higher the better. So I'll make first one and average daily spend. I'll actually say that it's good to have a high daily average spend, even though that may not be the best thing that you care about. I'll put it here anyway. And if I make this a little bit bigger, we can actually start to tell which days are better performing in which areas. And just because this is ugly, I'm going to hurry and format that as dollars. But now we can look and say, all right, how do our weekends tend to perform? Our weekends versus weekdays here. First of all, our weekdays spend considerably more than our weekends. To just do a quick divide here, I want to do C4, which is the total for how much our average weekend day spends. I want to divide that by C7, which is our average weekday spend. So it looks like our weekend days spend about half as much, which actually makes a lot of sense because people probably aren't on LinkedIn the same amount just surfing around during weekends as they are a weekday. Okay, that's interesting. The next thing I want to notice is, is there a day that has better performance? And in this case, I see a lot of green values all lining up along Sunday. So it actually looks like Sunday is by far our best day. It's not our best day for volume here, but it is our best day for efficiency. Click-through rates tend to be higher. Costs per click tend to be significantly lower. Costs per lead tend to be lower. Our conversion rates are higher and our open rates are a little bit higher. If we look through the rest of our days here, you can see Friday actually has the best open rate for opening lead forms, but definitely not our best conversion rate. And you can tell this by having a poor to mediocre cost per lead. And it also looks like our cost per click is highest on Monday and next highest is Friday. That's really interesting to know because we've done a lot of analysis on clients and we rarely see weekends outperform weekdays. But in this case, the data is undeniable. It also looks, if we're looking at our click-through rates here, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are all kind of similar, but then they drop on, the, on Thursdays and Fridays. Not too much, but they're there. So now that we've done this analysis, it's important to understand the limitations. So first of all, all of this is data that is based off of the UTC time zone. And if you're like me and you don't live in the UTC time zone, like the UK, then you'll have to understand that this is LinkedIn counting part of the next day as well. For me, I'm in the mountain time zone in the state of Utah, which is actually seven hours before UTC. So that's a bit of a limitation here that each one of these days is actually counting seven hours of the next day. So I just have to accept that this is a limitation here. This is also a limitation that's based off of these only being days. LinkedIn doesn't give us the opportunity to dive in and look at specific hours of the day. I really wish we had that. But if you need a more precise report, these are reports that, that we will build for you at b2links.com. So you can always reach out to us. We build these for clients. We can build more precise daily reports, and we can also build an hourly report showing you exact performance of your ads and your campaigns by every hour of each individual day. We can make a really cool analysis like this. We can even set your campaigns to run on schedules that take advantage of the insights that we've found from doing this analysis. And this is cool because LinkedIn doesn't offer that functionality natively. So I hope this has been incredibly educational for you to understand how to break down LinkedIn's traffic by day. And if you're looking for a partner to manage your LinkedIn ads to get you the very best performance at the lowest possible prices, reach out to us at b2link.com. We would absolutely love the opportunity to explore with you. And make sure to subscribe below to get more LinkedIn ads related content and helpful hits. Thanks for watching.